Hello and Happy New Year's everyone. Uh, today is January 1st, 2020, and so I can officially say that my top 20 of 2019 is done because 2019 is over. There is no one more day, there is no room for any last changes. My top 20 games of 2019 are here and ready to go into them. Um, in this list I'm going to cover numbers 20 through 11, and I'll save the top 10 for another day. Uh, the reason 20 is pretty simple. Um, I had too many games for a top 10, too many games that I felt were worthy of mentioning, of really going into a little more detail, and yet I have no near enough games that I care about to really do a top 100, a top 50, a top 40, whatever it is. Um, I have a good probably 40 to 50 games I really love, but to really go into them I just figured 20 was a good number that I'll start off with this year and we'll see how the years progress. Honestly, 2019 has been the best year of gaming for me probably since 2012 when I first got into the hobby. In terms of the sheer amount of amazing games that have come out, games that have entered my top games, uh, 2019 has just been an incredible year. I'd have a hard time picking any other year that beats 2019, except for, like I said, 2012. Um, not that I really got all those games from 2012, but the games I played that were from 2012 that I've really enjoyed, 2019 kicks 2012 out of the water for me. In any case, uh, with that, bet, that, that said, let's start going through them. To begin with, we have Arena the Contest, which is a bigger box than I thought when I grabbed this off the floor. Um, Arena the Contest is incredible. Um, I fully expect Arena the Contest to go up from 20 to something a little higher as I finish the campaign. Um, it is a, it, it's technically a PvP head-to-head -head game. I have a full video about it, I have a write-up about it, um, but it's where it shines, at least for me, is the co-op gameplay. It's it's a lot of fun, it's simple, It's it's deep in what you can do and the amount of different things you could do while I can teach you and get you up and running in 10 minutes or less. Um, it is fun, it is engaging, it's basically the, I mean, Ultimately what I'm looking for in a game is fun, Arena of the Contest delivers that in spades. As I go through the campaign, I am fairly certain it will continue to rise. Next year, I, I don't know if it'll hit the top 10, there's a lot of competition for that, but I wouldn't be surprised if it gets very close, uh, you know, 12 or 13. If I have to predict, I'd probably say around 12 or 13 at the end of 2020, but we'll see. Um, next from there, we have Tigris and Euphrates. Tigris and Euphrates is as different from the contest as you can get. It is, uh, you know, it's a Euro game by Rainer Knizia. It is incredibly tight. It's from, actually, I wonder if it's from 2012. I don't actually know. Um, I will have to look into that. But any case, looks like 2014, but I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, Tiger and Euphrates is a great, great game. It's probably, well, I mean, I think it is because it's my top 20. Um, it's my favorite Reina Knizia game. It's a, it's incredibly, incredibly tactical, incredibly engaging. It's tight. Every decision matters. Ultimately, it's a scoring system where you just have to get the most in four different uh, colors, effectively, of getting the most. Uh, you have a, your lowest score in a color is your score. So you try to want to be well spread and div divide your, your strengths evenly amongst the board and the playing. But it's incredible. It, the, the level of, of tenseness and decision making that you can get from some, such a simple rule set, uh, it, it's hands down Reina Knizia's favorite game for me. Number 17, we have, or oh, 18, 18, I skipped one. Number 18, we have Monikers. Uh, this is the only part, that's not true. This is one of two party games to hit this list. Um, it, it's it's harder for me to get those lighter family games or those party games into a top 20 list because they tend to be a lot of fun, but they rarely give me that that sheer enjoyment that I, the, 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 the loving, the, the, the overwhelming feelings and lack of words that I can have for certain games, party games don't do that for me. Uh, but Monikers does. Monikers is incredible. Every single time you play it, this is if you have to pick a single party game that is accessible, your friends don't touch games, they, they look at you strangely every time you mention a game, grab Monikers. You can teach it in a few minutes, you can display it by just going through the cards. Basically there's three rounds of the game, you have a bunch of cards that are in play. The first round everyone can say whatever they want. You know, if you're talking about, I don't know, Tigers and Euphrates, uh, you can say the game by Reina Knizia, we have to score multiple systems, it's on, you know, Alex's number 19 game, whatever you want to say. You can literally say anything you want. In round two you get to say one word. Knizia, Tigers. Uh, in round three you have to act it out. I don't even know how to act out Tigers and Euphrates. Um, I don't know. 
Either way. But rounds one, you say whatever you want. Round two, you say a word. Round three, it's charades. This game is hilarious. Every single time you play it, you'll have your own little mini meta game that's inspired by the game. You'll have someone yelling a random word that has nothing to do with a card because last round someone yelled that word. It, it is it is hilarious. And my only complaint about it is you really need at least six, and honestly, I recommend eight. Um, and it's hard for me to get that to the table, but when you have a large gathering of any kind and half of them aren't gamers, pull out monikers. They will reevaluate every single thought they ever had about you and board games. Number 17. For my second party game, we have One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Um, with the Daybreak expansion, there are a whole bunch in this genre. We have them up here. We have One Night Ultimate Werewords. We have One Night Ultimate Alien. But really, I just recommend One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Uh, they are all fun games. They are all good games. But One Night Ultimate Werewolf is by far the best. This game is... It's, it's basically resistance or werewolf or any of those genres, but in which you have to, you basically, you don't know what happened during the night. So I, one of the reasons I love this game and I consider it better than resistance is because you can be lying and still be a good guy. And that takes a lot of the pressure off of lying. A lot of people walk into a game of resistance, they don't lie very well, they don't have to bluff yet, they haven't established that, and the tenseness can really ruin the experience for those people. I always start off by explaining to people, you can be lying in this game and you are still a good guy. It does not matter if you get caught in a lie. It can matter if you get caught in multiple lies that don't cascade to the truth later, but that first thing out, first thing out the door every time, I'm the Tanner, kill me. I was a werewolf. You can, you can say whatever you want, it doesn't matter, and people know that. You just talk to promote other people to react and talk, and eventually figure out the truth. And if you figure out the truth first, that helps. I mean, the, the other night, I was playing this last night, I was a werewolf, I figured out what happened during the night successfully, and then lost track of what my goal was, and helped everyone else vote for the other werewolf. I like sat there, I was like, no, but he traded with him, and he did this, he did this, it's him! Point at him! Vote him! And then they did. And then I flipped over my card and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot I'm also a werewolf. It's insane. The sheer hilarity ensues. Uh, it's an incredible game. Uh, number 16, Through the Ages. Through the Ages I have a tough relationship with. Um, this one left my collection because of how hard it is to get to the table and how much time it takes to play and it really it turned me off of it for a long time. But then I got the app back and really enjoyed playing it again and reminded me how much I love this game and why I love this game. Uh, I got Through the Ages, the original edition, way back in the day. I got the new edition came out. It is a, uh, it's a, Euro, it's a, it's a, what's it called? A Civ simulator. It's not a classic explore or whatever, but you have a card row, you get your leaders, you get your technologies. It emulates a Civ game to the nth degree. It is my favorite Civ game by far. Um, it is, it is hard to get to the table, which is why it's, Honestly, it's one of those weird things where it's my it's in my top 20, yet I don't play it often enough and I, I got rid of it, which is weird for my top 20. But Through the Ages is incredible. If you can get it to the table, ideally with three, I highly recommend not playing with four. The, the downtime is not worth the extra player. Two is good, less downtime, but you do lose that three player interaction. Uh, three is my favorite player count for this game. Great game, Vlada Svatil, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, highly recommend it. Then Anything on this list I highly recommend. Number 15, we have Brass. Um, I never played the original Brass. I did play uh, the replacement game, which I'm blanking on now. Brass was replaced by something. Either way, I'm forgetting. Anyways, Brass was replaced by a game, but then that came back and was replaced by Brass, Age of Industry. It was replaced by Age of Industry. Then it was replaced again by Brass later with this beautiful print by Roxley Games. Uh, Roxley always does good stuff in terms of the sheer quality of the components. This is by far my favorite game from Roxley. Uh, the, 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 the art is gorgeous. The, the iron clays are amazing. Everything in this game is well done. It makes you feel like you're playing a premium experience around an incredibly premium game. Uh, this is my favorite Martin Wallace design. I love many of his games. I love uh, Few Acres of Snow. I love Steam. There's many Martin Wallace games I love. I only end up keeping so many because of limited time to play games, and Brass is my favorite Martin Wallace. Um, it, it's it's a tight, tight game. I also have Brass Birmingham over here. Let's make that, you know, nice and pretty looking. Um, and it's, uh, it's a great game. Uh, 
if you like tight economic games, Brass is Brass will do it for you. Next we have Mage Knight. Mage Knight is a game I have so far only played solo. Um, from what I can see, the internets are mixed about whether you should only play it solo or also play it two player. They are pretty pretty on the same page, but do not play it with three or four. It's not worth it. Uh, just from sheer downtime. Uh, this game, like Through the Ages, is very very hard. Also by Vladis Vatel. I wonder if there's a trend here. Um, like Through the Ages, it's very hard to get to the table just because of how much is going on, the sheer complexity of how things interact. But like Through the Ages, when those things interact, it is incredibly satisfying. Um, it is. It was one of my favorite solo play experiences of 2019. It's new to me in 2019. Speaking of which, I forgot to mention uh, from this list. Well, I'll go at the end. Um, but yeah, it's it's through the ages. Uh, Mage Knight is, is is an incredible, incredible game. It's not my favorite solo game, but it is up there. Um, then from there we have Kemet. Kemet is one of I think I went in order. Kemet is is was part of my top ten a long time ago. Um, not that long ago, actually. Probably uh, maybe two years ago. I don't know. Um, another game, which I'll come to later, replaced this in my top ten. Um, it is, but it's still incredible. Every decision matters. Uh, it's a it's a combat game. It's one of those hybrids, Euros and Ameritrash together. You have your your clans. You move them across the board. I don't know if it's called clans, but you move them across the board. But the whole fun of the game is that these every this whole overlay of power tiles that you have to pick from, and each power tile you pick gives you and only you a competitive advantage that no one else will get. And the way you pick different power tiles, some of them defensive, some offensive, some economic, um, the, with the expansion you get a whole other area. It, it's, it's so satisfying to have things that you and your team can do that your opponents cannot. And then playing around those advantages, it is so satisfying. And, and anyone can buy one of these at any time. You, you have all of the same starting point of access, and then how you play the game it will determine how well you can get to different tiles before your opponents and get an advantage that your opponents don't have. Uh, the way it plays out is incredibly satisfying every single time. Um, I have the basic expansion. I tried Seth, did not like Seth at all. Um, I should rephrase that. I thought Seth was very promising, but it took a three hour game that was amazing and turned it into a six hour slog. Still a good game, but not six hours good. So I got rid of Seth, but ultimately the base game and Tassetti expansion, I do recommend. Uh, then we get to number 12, Dogs of War. Not the first, well, the, yes, the first Simon game on this on the top 20, but definitely not the last. Uh, Dogs of War is one of the most underrated Simon games out there. And yes, there are entire threads about what does underrated mean. Uh, to me, underrated means this is not in the general public's eye. People do not know about this game as much as they should, yet when they play it, they love it. Um, this is a Simon Kickstarter that made $50,000, I believe it was. Maybe it's 500000 Whatever it was, it was, I think it was fifty. I'll check it up later. It was low. It was the possible possibly one of the lowest Simon Kickstarters to date. I didn't I wasn't even on the Kickstarter bandwagon at that point, but when I finally got this to the table, I was blown away. It is it is uh your the players are investing in different armies and different conflicts and the gameplay is so tight and it's so engaging and it plays in uh, uh, generally an hour and a half maybe two hours. It, it is incredibly rewarding for the experience it provides. It's all about investing in different forces and trying to uh you know get the most stake in those forces to, you know, you'll, you'll invest in one house and fight for that house. Meanwhile, you'll fight for the other house. Someone else might invest in no houses and just focus on getting points straight off the board. Uh, the gameplay is engaging, it's accessible, it's very easy to teach, very quick to play. Quick's relative, but quick for the level of depth it provides. And that is number uh, 12. And finally, for my top 10, number 11, we have Terraforming Mars and the giant lot of cards and expansions that are in this box. Terraforming Mars is amazing. Um, most of the time when I get these games enter the public's eye, I tend to ignore them for a year or so to see if, tend to, sometimes I get caught up. Um, I tend to ignore them for a year or so to see if they really last. Uh, Gloomhaven I didn't touch until two years in or something like that. Uh, Terraforming Mars I didn't touch for at least a year. Uh, Mage Knight has been forever. I like to wait to see if a game settles to see if that score is really that score or if that score is just a temporary hype around the game. Terraforming Mars lived up to every bit of hype. It is a, it's a card play game. It's all about the card play. I only ever play it with the drafting mechanic because 
I love drafting. Drafting is one of my favorite mechanisms in a game. It means that every decision is tough, every decision is tense, every decision is is fraught with the risk of both what you're taking and what you're handing to your opponent. A Terraforming Mars escalates that tension by making you pay for every card you keep. So you want all those cards you drafted, but you, if you pay for them, you might not be able to play them as often as fast. You have to frequently choose between being able to play the best cards or having all the good cards but not being able to play as much as you want. And it makes every decision so tense, so meaningful, so impactful. I have every single expansion with it. If you had to pick one expansion, I recommend uh, Prelude the most. Prelude is my favorite expansion. It, 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 the, the drafting adds time to the game and the Prelude compensates for that by giving everyone a head start. Um, I like all the expansions though. Um, I'm not sure I haven't played with all of them. I like all the expansions I've played though. But Terraforming Mars plus Prelude are the main ones I'd recommend if you're trying to get into it. Um, ultimately, that's my top 11. From my top 11, the ones that are new to me this year are number 20, Arena of the Contest is new to me this year. Uh, number 15, Brass is old, uh, Mage Knight is Mage Knight is no, new to me this year. I've been trying to get to the table for years. Uh, I think it's left my collection three times before I finally got to the table but I really enjoy it, uh, and I think, Terra no, Dante Forest, that's it. I think those are the only two games from my top, from my 20 through 11 that are new to me this year. Um, I will be back later this week with my top 10. Ultimately, that's it. Please like and subscribe. You can subscribe over here, and you can like this video or watch this next video here, and you can like somewhere down there. I'm hoping pointing in the right direction. These are all very important things. Uh, this video is brought to you by Board Game Co. Buy, sell, and trade your way to a better collection. We have all kinds of deals on you Used games, new games, old games, games you can find, games you can't find. Um, if you haven't tried trading yet, give us a shout. We love trading. We highly recommend it. We think it's the most economic way to turn over all those games you're not playing, all those games that didn't make your top 20 list, and to get games that will be in your top 20 list in 2020. Thanks so much, and I will see you next time.